Hey everyone, Shadow here, and welcome to another Marvel Contest of Champions video. So, it is time. Time to rank another 5 star to rank 5. And as you can see, we have a science advancement coming up. Now, let me tell you a little bit about what's going on right now. I'm actually in Walmart, on a line, waiting to get a money order. And I'm watching this tick down and right at the time that it expired and was ready, that is when I got called up. So I'm doing this at the same time as getting the money order. Look at the amount of time we have left on the level up event. We've got less than five minutes. So I don't have any time to talk with her and discuss the money order. I'm just like, yep, I need a money order for this amount and I am doing this at the same time. So who do you suppose I chose? We didn't have a whole lot of time. We went with Invisible Woman. I have a rank four to five gem. So a little game that I like to play, I will rank up the next person based on the advancement. Now the advancement itself doesn't have good rewards. And I had promised myself, which I broke the promise, that I wouldn't wait till the last minute like this ever since I messed up, forgot, and missed the level up event completely. And I don't level up champions outside of the level up event. So I was a bit salty about that and said, I'm not gonna do that again. The rewards for advancement aren't worth it. But as you can see, here I am at it again. So why Invisible Woman? Well, she's actually pretty underrated. Uh, I don't see a lot of people using her, uh, and there's a good reason. The gameplay that you have to adopt when fighting with her to maximize her damage is not the easiest, and it's not the standard parry and then counter style. You have to play a little bit differently in order to maintain her damage, and I will show that in the uh, Realm of Legends gameplay that's coming up. But... Invisible Woman is definitely not bad. She's actually pretty tanky. And so I was thinking of taking her up anyway. She doesn't need to be awakened. And I was really happy to see that science advancement. Because otherwise, I would have just taken up my three-star squirrel girl and probably taken somebody up to rank four as a four-star because I'm trying to keep my T4 basics. And so... Taking someone to rank four as a four star would use them up or taking someone to rank three would use them up unless I used a gem. And so I was happy to see the science advancement because I had a gem and I'm like, oh yeah, that's going to her. The only other person uh, that I have that it would have been used for uh, would be Void, but he's not even awakened. All right, so I'm showing you guys the synergies. I've done a video on her already. So if you haven't seen that, uh, it's a closer look, Invisible Woman. Uh, so go check that out. Just do a search on the channel or look at the playlist. Uh, I have a playlist for just the closer look videos. So in this video, we're just going to showcase her damage against uh, Realm of Legends Winter Soldier. All right. So just in case you were curious, I had one minute to spare. Got all of the science advancement. I got the uh, second to last milestone for the level up, which, as you can see to the right, gives you the units. All right, so here's the team that I decided to go in here with. Nothing too special. It's basically a crit team, uh, crit and crit damage. And we're going to activate her pre-fight ability. I don't remember if I did that in the last one. But you can see it there. So she's going to deal additional damage while she is invisible, but it will drain that force field. All right, so here we go. Now, I am running suicides. So that's going to ramp up her damage as well. Now, I want you to notice that she's invisible and she came out of invisibility pretty quickly. The reason is because I'm bleeding, thanks to Double Edge. When she's bleeding, it drains the force field and she's coming out of it very quickly, all right? 
And that's what happened there. I was still bleeding when I went uh, invisible. But the basic strategy is once you are invisible, and you're going to see me do this here, all right? You dash back, and when you dex, that's when you enter invisibility. Now, it is indefinite until you make contact. That means if they hit you, if you parry them, any contact or a fight or a, an attack that would have made contact, you are going to lose your invisibility. So what you're having to do while invisible is play a no hit style. So you see here, I'm having to bait out the special, which is fine. Every time I do this, look at the vulnerability uh, that gets placed on him, the debuff vulnerability. It's gonna stack up and the higher it stacks up, the more damage she puts out. So just look at these crits. Look at the damage that she's able to do. So you see I'm hitting into his block because I'm trying to push him to a special one. That's what you want to do. You want to push to a special one. And I want you to notice her health throughout all of this. Even though I am running suicides, I want you to look at her health. She is pretty tanky. And compare her health at the end of the fight. She is pretty underrated in my opinion. But this kind of style is not that easy to maintain. All right, so here we go. She's doing about the most damage that she's going to do. Boom. Okay. Um, well, not the most damage because she can still stack up those vulnerabilities. So, all right, now right there, uh, that would have made contact, which is why I came out of invulnerability. So I messed up there. I evaded a little bit too slow. And so even though I didn't get hit, it took away the invulnerability i mean the uh, invisibility i don't know how many times i'm gonna say invulnerability because her debuffs are vulnerability but it's invisibility and just look at the damage that she's doing you see that 20k crit 22k crit so yeah she is very underrated in my opinion and worthy of a rank five if you like her so uh after this fight we're gonna have one more fight uh, to showcase a little bit more of what she can do. Now, keep in mind also that she's fighting with a disadvantage. She does not have class advantage here. So she's doing quite well, uh, better than a lot of other five-star champions. And again, look at her health. That is impressive to me. All right, so down goes Winter Soldier. Didn't take that many hits, and she's left with a lot of health. To finish out the video, I brought Invisible Woman into Act 5. This is 4.1, and I chose the Life Transfer path uh, because it's pretty easy. Now, I'm not going to make you uh, watch all the fights along this path, so we'll watch a couple of fights. And you'll see how she did pretty much on the entire path. And finally, we will have the boss fight against Punisher. So because I'm running suicides, it's not easy to uh, build up her damage. She already does great damage uh, because of the suicides, but that double edge causes her to lose her invisibility pretty quickly so she's not able to build up the vulnerability debuffs on the opponent until that bleed is gone all right so at this point here she can build them up but she's also hitting pretty hard still even without the vulnerability buffs uh debuffs on them all right so you see here i'm building them up here but all it takes is for me to be a little slow and it would be over with. But in this particular case, I was able to do what I needed to do to maximize her damage uh, towards the end. But that's one of the reasons that she's a little underrated because you need to be careful about that. I can't parry him if I want to build up those vulnerability debuffs. So that takes a different play style than people are normally used to um, but she's great i like her i don't know how often i'll use her 
you know, outside of Arena because I have other options that are better. But she is a great option for a lot of content. Pretty tanky as well. So you see there, I just started getting hit. I don't know why. Wasn't really paying attention. Um, but it's life transfer, so it doesn't matter. Um, she's always going to be back up to full as long as I'm hitting him pretty well. All right, so my bleed debuff is down. So now I would have had to wait for, you know, the uh, invisibility to come back. But I just decided to go ahead and finish the fight. All right, so now we're on the final boss. Uh, Punisher 2099. You can see uh, the active buffs that I have to deal with. Nothing too crazy. All right. So she is perfectly capable of handling this fight. Uh, so I activated her pre-fight ability. So she's doing extra damage if we get to that point. All right. So here we are. We go ahead and it doesn't matter in the beginning. I parry and go in because the double edge is going to make her uh, invisibility go down uh, pretty quickly after I get it anyway. So may as well go ahead and play normal. All right. So now I don't have the bleed debuff on me. So now I'm trying to bait him out. I want to build up those vulnerability debuffs. All right. So the more of those that are on him, the more damage I'm going to do. And you saw I did an intercept. And look at that, 9K crit. Now, right there, I parried. So that's why you see she came out of her invisibility. But we finished him off anyway. So that's going to do it, guys. Hopefully, you enjoyed this video of Invisible Woman. Take care. Click like, subscribe, leave a comment. Let me know what you thought about the video. And you all have a blessed day.